Now look at look at all these fouls. That foul here, foul there. That's two fouls. Three fouls, four fouls. None of them called. They've been fouling her. The refs ain't calling it. At this point, I think the referee's hating on her. They mad at the money she get. If you've been watching the WNBA this season, you've seen the arrival of a new star, Caitlin Clark. Fans are ecstatic about her electrifying skills, but the reception from fellow WNBA players has been anything but friendly. Many have taken every opportunity to rough her up, pushing the boundaries of fair play until games have resembled street brawls more than basketball. Over the course of the season, Caitlin faced five flagrant fouls and countless other hits, and the referees simply looked the other way. What should have been standard rookie hazing has escalated into something far worse, with Caitlin being pushed, tripped, whacked on the head, and shoulder checked without any real protection from officials. Despite it all, Caitlin remained professional, refusing to let anything phase her. But how long can she keep enduring this treatment? How much longer until Caitlin Clark decides she's had enough? With every reckless foul and every cheap shot, the possibility grows that Caitlin might walk away, not just from her team, but from the entire league. And if that happens, the WNBA could lose its brightest rising star. The real scandal is, why are the referees letting this happen? Cheap shots against Caitlin Clark came in many shapes or forms, even when she didn't have the ball in her hands. Quite often, bigger players would casually make excessive contact while going for the ball or fighting for position. While this is seemingly normal in basketball, the level of intensity was a bit over the top in several situations. One such situation occurred during the match between Indiana Fever and Las Vegas Aces, when guard Jackie Young clobbered Clark and then fell on top of her while trying to secure a rebound. It all happened in a moment. And to make things more curious, it was away from the ball where Clark wasn't in a position to impact the play very much. Clark, the hesitation, is working inside the reverse. Owen took a big hit there on Jackie Young. Just by looking at this scene, you can see that Caitlin was in serious pain. Young's move was not just careless, it was reckless. She initiated contact under the guise of going for a rebound, but the excessive force was clearly unnecessary. Losing her balance, Young tripped over Clark with her full weight, making an already dangerous play even worse. The first bump threw Caitlin off, but the follow-through took things into dangerous territory. Considering that Caitlin isn't a significant offensive rebounding threat, why did Young feel it was so crucial to body check her so aggressively? Was there an intention beyond just basketball? Perhaps to send a message? Even more concerning, why did the referees allow it? This kind of leniency is fueling the growing perception of a WNBA officiating scandal, where Caitlin Clark has been left to fend for herself against unchecked aggression. The thing is, such plays were quite common this year in the WNBA whenever Caitlin Clark was involved. There were a couple of teams that made a point out of playing tough physical defense that bordered on recklessness. Seattle Storm was among such teams, and its players obviously made a concerted effort to make life as miserable for Caitlin as they could. Consider the following example where center Ezzy Magbagor went all in to block Caitlin Clark's shot, but ended up making contact with more than just the ball. She whacked Clark on the head so hard that it hurts just to watch this game clip. Goes around Agumake, drives baseline, and shot rejected by Ezzy Magbagor! From whatever angle you look at it, this play by Magbigor can hardly be justified as a legitimate defensive move. Sure, she closes out hard on Caitlin's drive to the basket, but instead of just contesting the shot, she ends up making heavy contact with Caitlin's head. A defender's job is to prevent an easy basket, but there must be limits to how physical a play can be before it turns dangerous. The fact that the referees let this happen is shocking. Either they were explicitly instructed to turn a blind eye, or there is a deeper agenda at play. This kind of negligence is not just about missing a call. It points to something far more troubling, something that undermines the very integrity of the game. The real question remains, why is Caitlin Clark not getting the same protection as other players? It's becoming harder to dismiss the idea of a refereeing bias against her, one that's allowing dangerous, reckless play to continue without consequence. The Storm promo team even went as far as to use the photo of the collision to promote Magbigor as a Defensive Player of the Year candidate. Essentially, they decided to pretend this was a clean block, despite video evidence to the contrary. This decision caused serious backlash from WNBA fans, who called out Seattle for tasteless behavior and manipulative attempt to capitalize on Clark's visibility. Bad fouls can happen during a basketball game, but teams shouldn't celebrate them 
just because the name of the player that ended up on the floor can generate a lot of clicks. It appears that the entire Storm team had something to prove against Clark. When they weren't literally trying to beat her up, Seattle players used every chance to get into verbal altercations with the Indiana Fever star. Even a backup like Victoria Vivians felt compelled to get into a shouting match with Caitlin Clark as they were running up the court. She got into Clark's face and tried to escalate the situation, but fortunately, Aaliyah Boston got between the two and led Caitlin away. It wasn't a pretty scene to behold. <laughs> Victoria Vivian's an old Indiana Fever player. The refs called a double technical to defuse the situation. And to be fair, Caitlin did participate in the confrontation at least briefly before walking away. We don't know what was said between the two players or who started it, but it's safe to assume it was a bit personal, which explains why Vivian's kept going at Clark even after Caitlin disengaged. There is a line between trash talking and fighting, and this came dangerously close to the latter without any real reason. Another thing is, bench warmers shouldn't engage stars in trash talk, and Vivian's averaged barely over three points per game this year. She came into the game and tried to bait Clark into an incident that would have cost Fever more than it would Seattle. And that's an old tactic that is increasingly being legislated out of the modern game. Caitlin Clark has quickly learned not to take the bait, and while she is fiery on the court, she mostly avoids open conflict. She is still a magnet for hard hits, and at least a part of that comes from panic and frustration on the part of her opponents. Clark has proven that she can attack the basket just as effectively as she can shoot from the outside, with a defender frequently trying to meet her at the rim. In several situations, this has resulted in violent fouls that went a little beyond fair play. A good example was a foul committed by the Las Vegas forward Alicia Clark, a 37-year-old veteran who knows what she should and shouldn't do. Here is how she ended up hitting Caitlin on the head under the basket. We're getting their first win last night in Los Angeles. Yes. That's going to be pretty tough, I would think, on Caitlin to just really... You can clearly see how Alicia Clark tried to block Caitlin's shot, got a piece of the ball, and then followed through right into Caitlin's head. What's shocking is that she protested the foul, even though the contact with Caitlin's face was undeniable. Intentional or not, it would have been the right thing for Alicia to admit the foul and check on Caitlin. Instead, she set a poor example by refusing to acknowledge her actions. Regardless of any competitive drive or envy, this kind of reckless play should never be excused or brushed aside, especially by a veteran. It's highly likely that media narratives surrounding Caitlin Clark have at least partially fueled the way other players are treating her. In particular, the rivalry between Clark and fellow rookie Angel Reese has become one of the most talked about storylines of the WNBA season, gaining a life of its own. It seems Reese and her Chicago Sky teammates took the rivalry too far, repeatedly targeting Caitlin whenever they had the chance. In their four matchups against the Fever, Chicago committed four flagrant fouls on Clark, an outrageous average of one per game. Even worse, many of these fouls had no real impact on the game beyond just trying to rattle Caitlin. This wasn't about defense, it was personal. Let's start with the less egregious violations. The foul by Michaela Onionware was reckless and risky, but it happened within the flow of the game. She tried to defend a three-pointer and seemingly lost her own balance and slammed into Clark, sending her to the free throw line. The collision was pretty intense and must have shaken Clark a little bit, and it was enough for a flagrant foul to be called upon review due to a rule that prohibits the defensive player from occupying a shooter's landing space. Take a look for yourself, how Onionware prevented Clark's safe landing. There could be some more coming. Clark with the step back and gets fouled. It's pretty clear what happened here. Onionware was late on a closeout and panicked, worried that Caitlin would drain an open three. She lunged forward, unable to stop herself and ended up colliding into Caitlin. The mindset of risking three free throws rather than conceding an open shot shows just how desperate Chicago Sky were to contain Caitlin. Onionware couldn't let her teammates down, even if it meant a reckless play. In the end, she made things worse by earning a flagrant foul. And as it turns out, that was only the mildest of the nasty fouls Chicago would commit on Caitlin during their matchups. The tone was set early in the season when these two teams met for the first time. It was a close game, and the atmosphere was heated, which led to perhaps the most infamous physical attack on Caitlin during the entire 2024 WNBA season. The culprit was Sky Guard Chenity Carter, who was directly matched up against Caitlin for most of the night. After a made basket while the ball was not yet inbounded, Carter just walked up to Clark and drove a shoulder into her, instantly flooring the rookie. It was an act of unprovoked aggression that has no place on the basketball floor. Just look how horrible this rare, dead ball flagrant foul looked in real time. Her jumper is good. Kennedy Carter now with 12 points off the bench.
Unlike some of the other fouls we've seen, this one by Chenity Carter was undeniably intentional. Carter clearly wanted to send a message. She was the tough one, and she was going to prove it, no matter how reckless. This wasn't a basketball play, it was a cheap shot, and it should have resulted in a much harsher penalty. Shockingly, the referees allowed Carter to stay in the game, which was a complete disgrace. How could they let her continue after such a blatant cheap shot? The entire Chicago Sky team seemed to rally behind her, as if nothing wrong had happened. Carter dismissed her actions as simply competitiveness, but it was anything but. The support from her teammates, including Angel Reese and the rest of the bench hyping up Carter's dirty play, was a glaring display of poor sportsmanship. This kind of behavior explains why Chicago couldn't back up their aggression with success on the court, ultimately falling to Indiana, who took the season series 3-1. The last game between the two young teams was especially edgy, and Caitlin Clark endured several other hits. The worst of them was the handiwork of Diamond D Shields, who committed a foul almost as inexplicable as the one from Chennedy Carter. She literally ran over Caitlin Clark in transition and made unnecessary contact while leading with her shoulder. Since this happened in open court while both players were in motion, the potential for injury was quite serious. Here is how the play developed that led to this flagrant foul. Here's Clark, for 29 points, gets tripped up. In case you haven't noticed, this happened in the fourth quarter of a game that Indiana was leading by 25 points. The game was a blowout, and the Sky got embarrassed by a team that was playing in sync and with a sense of purpose. D Shields was clearly frustrated that her team couldn't even slow down Clark, so she just got back at her tormentor in a physical way. She was behind the play and couldn't do anything legal to prevent another easy score, so she steamrolled Clark, who didn't even see her coming. It was an act of a defeated, powerless player who can't control her emotions, and it represented a low point of Chicago's season that started so promisingly. The main reason why Chicago hates Caitlin so much is the presence of Angel Reese, who has a long-standing rivalry with Clark dating back to college. This rivalry was amplified as they both joined WNBA the same year and competed for the Rookie of the Year award. Reese has consciously embraced the villain role when it comes to Caitlin Clark, and while she is mostly respectful towards her foe in the media, Angel definitely maintains she is the more talented basketball player. That would all be fine if Reese kept it all on the level of boasts in media interviews, but she has taken part in the headhunting of Caitlin Clark along with her teammates. In fact, she earned one of the four flagrant fouls we previously mentioned on the following play. What started as a seemingly normal basketball play quickly turned ugly when Angel Reese lost control of her arm movement. Caitlin got behind Reese on her way to the basket, and instead of a clean block attempt, Reese ended up striking Caitlin in the head. It was obvious that Reese was two steps too late to challenge the shot, making the hit completely unnecessary. The question is, why did she continue the motion knowing she was out of position? Was it simply carelessness? or a deliberate attempt to send a message. Whatever the intention, it's troubling to see this kind of reckless play, especially when directed at a rival in such a vulnerable position. It is no coincidence that Caitlin Clark is fouled so much. It's true that she has the ball in her hands a lot, but as we've seen, she has been clobbered even in situations when she didn't. Some of the shellacking may even have been strategic. The opposing players and maybe even some coaches wanted to see how Clark will deal with physicality and adversity. In other situations, the fouls may have been just a form of petty revenge and a channel to direct professional envy. It's difficult to know which ones have been really malevolent and which just happened because of a misguided effort to stop Clark. There have even been instances when Caitlin got hit while she was playing defense, despite not being known as a lockdown defender. Hard screens are a common part of professional basketball, but sometimes they can be used as a convenient excuse for knocking an opponent to the ground without getting the ref's attention. Unfortunately, in Caitlin's case, many of these screens have been excessively violent and blatantly obvious fouls. Take, for example, a game between the Fever and Connecticut Sun, where Alyssa Thomas essentially clotheslined Clark while setting a screen. Five quick points here for Caitlin Clark, and Thomas just runs over Clark. The play was far beyond the bounds of fair physicality and should have been called immediately. Instead, it was just another moment where Caitlin was left vulnerable and the referees failed to step in. First of all, Thomas is moving up to the point of contact, which makes this an illegal screen. She goes out of her way to block out Clark and then leans into the pick with way too much force sending Caitlin instantly to the ground. This is a great example of how a routine play that happens dozens of times every game becomes a little bit more intense when Caitlin Clark is involved in any capacity. 
Alyssa Thomas is a WNBA veteran with 10 seasons on her resume. So when she does things like this, it's probably not because she got lost in the moment. More likely, she wants to put the prized rookie in her place and tries to do it in a very crude way. This offensive foul happened in a regular season game and could have raised the temperature between the two teams that were destined to meet in the first round of 2024 WNBA playoffs. Alyssa Thomas and the Sun gave Caitlin Clark the first taste of playoff basketball, which would be just a part of the learning process if not for some questionable fouls again. Connecticut won Game 1 easily on its own court, but another controversy erupted because Caitlin Clark got a black eye courtesy of Dejanai Carrington. Clark was attempting to shoot a three when a misjudged challenge turned into an eye poke, causing many fans to suspect this was another cheap shot. This is how it all went down. Harassed by Carrington, finds Boston. Both Clark and Carrington said after the game that the contact was inadvertent, and looking at the footage, it does look like a freak accident. But is it really? Carrington defended a pass aggressively, and while she claimed she didn't realize her fingers had made contact with Clark's face, it's hard to believe a player of her experience wouldn't know. Besides, players are advised to keep their nails trimmed to avoid accidental scratches or injuries. The fact that Carrington's long nails were involved makes this even more questionable and reckless. Caitlin collapsed in pain, and yet no foul was called. Another instance of the referees turning a blind eye. It makes you wonder if Caitlin feels pressured to downplay these hits, worried that speaking out might only make things worse for her. Maybe she fears the backlash from officials, or even the league itself, preferring to take the high road rather than risk further mistreatment. But the reality is, if the WNBA and its referees continue to ignore this pattern of reckless play, they are setting a dangerous precedent, one that could push Caitlyn away from the game altogether. Given the sheer amount of cheap shots she was subjected to, it's quite fortunate that Caitlyn Clark was able to finish her first season in one piece. After every nasty hit, she just stood up and continued to play without responding to the provocation in any way. While we should be thankful that she avoided major injury, we can't condone the treatment that she was given by other WNBA players. In her second campaign, Clark won't have the status of a rookie, so hopefully she will get more respect from defenders and officials alike. But it would be naive not to expect a few cheap shots disguised as hard, close-out, or bone-jarring picks, despite ample proof that Clark is a true competitor who doesn't change her approach after being hit. Defenders with few other options might continue to exact physical punishment and try to push her around. Judging by the outcomes of this season, Caitlin Clark will continue to make wild shots and connect on amazing passes no matter what the defenses do. For the sake of the game, the opposing coaches should keep their players' aggression under control and search for other ways to impact Clark's play that don't include leaving her bruised and bloodied after every game. In other words, Clark has earned the right to play ball without fearing for her life and limb every time down the floor, and WNBA should step in and punish the worst offenders that are repeatedly targeting Caitlin.